You can't fail to be moved by a wave of people taking part in a vote. We want to vote! We want to vote! In one sense, it's democracy in its most simple form. But underneath that, there was this niggling feeling that this is not going to go well. A great many people in Catalonia want Catalonia to be an independent country. They don't identify at all with Spain. This quest for independence, which goes back centuries and is threaded through Catalonia's history, was suddenly brought to this moment, October the 1st, 2017. They'd been promised this referendum, a promise that was made by the local government in Catalonia. The central government in Madrid had promised that the referendum would not take place. The police were there to prevent it from happening. There was a real feeling of how exactly are they going to stop this referendum? They can't stop the people from, from voting. There's just too many of them. There's too many polling stations. Yes, it's wonderful to see so many people out there. But behind all that, you know it's illegal and it's, it's not going to end well. just gone, uh, uh, what is it, just gone seven o'clock here uh, in Barcelona. We're outside of school. We'll take you through um, the crowds here to get a sense of what it's like. Most of the polling stations were schools. Word sort of spread that the police would try to shut them down very early in the morning. No one really knew how the day was going to unfold. They were all there. They all knew they wanted to vote, but they, they didn't know how that was going to come to be, whether the polling stations were going to open and they were going to be able to just go ahead and do it, whether they were going to have to fight for it. organization to make the referendum happen was impeccable. There was incredible documentation, literature about how to bring people of all ages in to protect the polling stations. That was very clearly spelled out. And also just how to carry out passive resistance. Just take a look at the, the demographic there, of the, the different people who turned up, people are determined, they say, to carry out their democratic right, which is to vote for independence. You had over a thousand polling stations, and there were 10,000 national police. They had to spread out all over Catalonia. They were moving around in groups of about 40. So if you try to do the math, there is no way that they can make a dent. It was extremely tense. People were just completely sandwiched next to each other, forming a solid block. The police were trying to pull them away one at a time. It must have been about 10 o'clock in the morning. That was the moment where I thought, this is switched now. This has become a, a very volatile situation. If this scene that we're seeing here is being replicated across the region, then um, there's going to be a problem. It's going to be a very difficult day. a heavy-handed approach by the authorities, uh, not just here in Barcelona, but in towns right across the area. Uh, let's move down and have a, a little look and see what's, what's going on further on down. Myself and Mark were up 
live, we'd spotted down the road the line of police vans. There was clearly something going on down there. So while we were live, we walked down the road and encountered this sit-in. Part of the plan of passive resistance was not to let them leave. So first, they wouldn't let the police in to confiscate the ballot boxes. But if they did get in and got the boxes, they wouldn't let them leave. The tension sort of ebbed and flowed a little bit. There were moments of relative calm where everyone was just sort of looking at each other and eyeing each other up. And then there were moments of singing and chanting, people getting in each other's faces. We were mid-interview with someone explaining how this was their peaceful democratic right to be able to vote. We are asking for democracy. I mean, it's our rights, civil rights. She was passionately explaining why she believed that she was allowed to do what she was doing. You know, we are just peaceful people who want to vote, who want to say what we want for our country. And then, bang. just started pushing back, so I was just being carried with this ocean of people. It's one of those situations where you could almost take your feet off the floor and you wouldn't fall over because the whole crowd is just compacted and carrying you. Once they started hitting with their clubs and the rubber bullets started going, I was holding on to Ed, the cameraman, and trying to make sure that he could keep shooting and not bump into something. People started to force their way back, and I just held on to him and tried to keep my eyes down for the rubber bullets so that I wouldn't get one in the eye. Up until then, you're thinking, I need to get some shots of this, I need to get some shots of that. There's a relatively structured thought process about what you need. Then when something like that happens, that mentally kind of goes out the window, and you're just filming what's in front of you. sitting by the, um, uh, the public here suddenly switched on a sixpence and then very, very quickly the police managed to move themselves out of there uh, using, I have to say, significant violence. Moments later, someone came up to me with a, um, a golf ball size rubber bullet. It looks exactly like a, a squash ball, but it's solid. It, it does float. They're fine. OK, so this is what they're firing. This is what and they, uh... would do a lot of damage if it hit you. Yeah, they're fine. Okay. Okay, we'll leave you guys and we'll come back to you later. The international reaction almost universally was very critical of the way that central government in Madrid and the courts in Madrid used their police to to shut down this vote. No one expected that the police violence would be on that level. And that's saying something, given that actually almost every country backed Madrid and Spain in saying that this vote shouldn't go ahead and that it was illegal. And yet, they all condemned Spain for the way that they tried to stop the vote. It was completely unjustifiable. The fact that police were ordered to do this was insanity. It was a huge misjudgment on behalf of the central Spanish government. But if you order national police to carry out their duty, they will, they will do it. The central government, they were worried about a constitutional crisis. In the end, they created a crisis on their own. <laughs>